Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yu Chen, and I'm a software engineer at the model serving team here at Databricks. So today, I don't have any new functionality to announce today. Yeah, all of the things I'm going to walk you through today, you probably already heard it, uh, is either already generally available, or you heard it uh, from keynotes and other presentations. But uh, what I want to do today is if you have always been wondering how to get started with generative AI projects, can you hear us? Anybody can hear us? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, good. Just those ones? Okay. Uh, all right, yeah, try new ones, please. Um, yeah, so if you have been wondering how to get started with generative AI projects, and uh, here I want to walk you through a very simple example, and uh, I'll show you how Databricks makes it easy. So uh, I, don't, I only have one slide, so all of this presentation going to be live demos. I hope that nothing breaks, but I, I should have a high confidence. <laughs> um, all right, so let's say what problem we're going to solve today. Imagine if you have a website uh, connecting hotel reviews. So now we started with the data set. We have a data set of uh, hotel reviews, and then you can see some of the example. It's pretty long, right? Um, generative AI um, projects, a very simple use case is to work with the languages. And then they say, now we want to extract the key factors from those hotel reviews to care about the positive ones people care about and the negative ones people hate about it. So you might want to condense these large data set of other reviews into much easier to consume use cases. So let's start with that. Right? We have a data set here. It's a very simple table. I'm showing 10 rows there. And if you are thinking about getting started with generative AI, go to Playground. That's where you want to start here. You can go to there from the navigation on the left side, Playground. Probably already seen this many times in some of the demos. And here is very similar to a ChatGPT user interface. On the top, you can see this is the term model we currently selected, which is our open DBRX model. And we provided some examples here. Let's click on one of them, such as sentiment analysis. Sounds similar to factor extraction, but you can see that it will respond. Give it a uh, prompt, and it will respond. And we can show some of the performance information, uh, how long it took, and how many tokens it consumed. And we can switch to another model, for example, the latest is the Lama 3 open model. And we can do something similar as well. You can choose to have an example here. Let's get back to our original task, right? So I'm going to clear that here. Uh, and uh, we can provide with a system prompt is to say what you want the model to do. And I'm going to say, your task uh, is to extract key factors from a hotel review. All right, so I'm going to tell that, save it, and uh, I'm going to come back and uh, copy uh, one example. All right, so it's easy to test and to see how the model responds. Send it. OK, and you can see the model responded with uh, a lot of uh, content, even more than the review itself. So that's not going to good. So what we can easily do is modify the system prompt now. Right? So now I, we see how it responded. Now we want to trigger it, experiment with that. So let's say, uh, I'll put no more, uh, no, no more than five factors. And, uh, and let's say as a, as a JSON string array, right? every factor uh, must be either positive or negative. Uh, actually, uh, also, we don't want to have the without any other words, words or explanation, so that we can easily pass that. And here we can regenerate the response and see how it does. All right, and now we have changed the prompt and it responded as we expected. Uh, I also want to show that we can also trick some of the low-level parameters if you want to do that. We have an instruction here, but uh, such as a temperature, if you want to reduce that to uh, limit, uh, reduce the randomness or max tokens, how much tokens it's going to output. And we can change that to, uh, say, as not as a JSON stream, but uh, say as a CSV stream instead, which will be comma separated. Right? So it can also regenerate them results, and it will do just that. Certainly, we have tested one of the models. You may want to try some of the other models as well. And with the playground, you can easily compare them, right? So let's try that out. On the right side, you can see add another one side by side. And here, um, 
we have, you can choose a different model. And I want to briefly talk about the different models we can support. Foundation model APIs here, these are the out of the box pay as you go models. So you, you pay as how much you consume. And there's no infrastructure set up upfront, just like a chat GPT is there. Right? You can call it and you can use it. And uh, we can also support if you have a fine tuned models or you want to host your own uh, Llama 3 model on your dedicated hardware. So these are provision throughput models is more suitable for production use case. You have a guaranteed this concurrency is gonna serve. Or even external models at the bottom, which I set up, if you're already using ChatGPT and you want to bring all of the governments into their breaks, you can do that as well. It's all in one place. I set it that up, I'm gonna show that as well. Well, actually, let's try that out. If I choose the ChatGPT4, and then uh, I'm gonna copy, sync the, uh, we can sync the prompt, let's see. Save that. We can sync the prompt there, and then we can sync the chat. So I'm gonna copy the same text and then paste it here. And you will see that it will respond, it both will respond at the same time. Now you can see, you can continue tweaking the system prompts or parameters, or yeah, try some other message to see how the both models perform. All right, so let's see, um, ChatGPT is not as good, I don't know why it's saying additional message, but let's go with the meta lemma three, so I'm gonna remove that. So we have experimented with the model, so on the playground. What if we now we want to move it to more formalized in a Python code, right? It's easy to do that as well from Playground. On the top left corner, you can see here show code examples. We have show examples with curl, uh, if you want to do it in a command line, or but more importantly, is the Python code. We can here copy, right, the button easy. Let's copy on that and move back to our notebook here. So I'm back to the notebook, I'm gonna uh, paste it. We are using, uh, we can use the OpenAI SDK. So if you're already using that, you can easily switch over. And uh, nothing is, uh, all, all of our endpoints are compatible with the OpenAI SDK. And the only modification I want to do is to get the Databricks token so that we can connect to the model securely. And because we are using a notebook, Databricks notebook, so we can just use this line instead. So, all right, so it's basically the same. We have, uh, it captures the system prompt we worked on earlier. And then we have a user information with all the parameters. Well, let's just run that and see. And we get the results back here in the Python codebook as well. So a little bit of coding, right? So it's pretty much working and uh, easily. Simple Python coding, we can define it as a function, extract as a review, as an input, and it's gonna return another extracted keywords as output. And then let's indent this, return, and let's change this as a review. Okay, so now we have it working now, I hope. And right, let's say, then we can call it extract. And, okay, so now we have a function that calls our foundational model API, just what we worked on. And I want to show that it's very easy to see we use Llama 3. We can just change that as well. I don't I want to change it to a different model, like I, my OpenAI that I set up earlier. I don't have to change anything else, just change the model name. And it will do the same as well. And we got the same results. Let's go back to the um, OpenAI, uh, number three example. Well, certainly now we have a function. You probably know how to do that over multiple rows. Just the, uh, I don't know if you attended the talk just before this one, which is talk about uh, calling this model, uh, foundation model APIs from SQL. So you could do that as well. Just calling this model name, we supply with the prompt, then it will gonna process the, uh, all of the rows here. Or alternatively, you can just uh, do a very the, the basic Python way by calling this function repeatedly in a loop as well. So now we have uh, moved from experimentation on a playground into this uh, uh, Python notebook. And now you have a pretty much working example there. I want to talk a bit, uh, show some other features as well. Um, one is about inference table. So imagine if you have, a, you have the application, you call the models, you want to, want to capture what the model has ever responded. All of the requests sent to the model and how the model has responded. And uh, we can enable the inference table or payload logging, as we call it. And here I have an endpoint that I have enabled this before. 
and you can see all of the requests you sent to the model will be logged here, and you will see the, the date, the time, general information about which request was sent before, the uh, system prompt and the user message, as well as the response from the model. So now you can have a, the table, including the, uh, in, the statistics of the usage, how many tokens were consumed. So now you can set up a monitoring and the evaluation workflow based on this information. Another new feature we just announced, uh, if you have seen the keynote uh, on the first keynote, we're a showcase of the tools category. So I want to talk a little bit about how this would work in the playground as well. So um, as we can see, the, these foundation models are very good at understanding language. But what if the model needs to obtain additional context? Right, so if you want, you want the model to perform additional tasks outside of the language in a different system or obtain information from somewhere else to facilitate the response, that's where the tools come in. Tools are the way to tell the model, here are the additional ways you can get information, and the model will decide to do that. So let's try that example here. Um, let's modify, well, let's increase the scope again. Um, we want to make the model to output, right? Depending, depending on the rating, okay? If a uh, rating is a one or two, it's a bad rating, include only negative factors. Otherwise, include only positive factors. So now we have a created challenges in the model. How, what about, where does the rating come from, right? So that's not included in the prompt. The model needs to have a way to do that. So in the playground, we can uh, pretend we have, a mod, we have a function the model can call to get the radiance. And uh, I'm gonna work off the basic example. We have an example here, you can start with that. I'm gonna say we have a, we pretend we have a function that's called a get review rating. And then the description is get the rating of the hotel review. And uh, the input is one field called a review and the string is the, the content of the hotel review. I don't need a second one, right? So if I remove that, and here is the input, it's required, All right? So in reality is you may want to set up this function as another uh, function in your catalog, so that's the tools catalog. If that's the case, the, a, the a playground the model will call it automatically, but here I'm just pretending we are testing the model, how it's gonna respond. I don't have a function. So I'm telling you I pretend I have a function and then see how the model responds. So I'm gonna re reload, uh, request it. And then the model responded, I need to call this function, provided with the input, which is the review I told it to, and it's expecting the output. Uh, so here in the playground, you can say, I pretend I give you a response back, which is four, and then we can see that it extracted the uh, positive reviews. That is uh, the reading of the review. What if I did it again? I see reload. And here, it's gonna try to call a function again. And then I say, pretend that we get it a reading of one. And now you can see it outputted only negative responses. So the tools can do a lot more than that. So it's a very simple example. And uh, in reality, you want to implement the function as well. But, uh, Putting the function aside, here you can test how the model responds and, uh, uh, on, that, on top of that. Um, all right, so the last thing I want to say is show is, uh, imagine we have a process of the data sets. So we have a much condensed key factors and then uh, for whatever reason now you want to analyze the information, I decided to write a blog post on how you decided to say these are the key factors and then um, we want to have a, well, for every blog post, we need to have a photo in there or images. So that is why we have introduced the new Shutterstock image AI that's also available in the playground as a foundation model AI. So a, actually, okay, so my, let me re-log in again very quickly. Um, okay, but you can see that Shutterstock image AI is our recent uh, new model that it does text to image, and it's uh, trained based on the proprietary uh, information from Shutterstock. So uh, we own, uh, they own all of the uh, IP from, from these models. And here, similarly, very simple uh, user UI here. You can provide a prompt, prompt. So here you can be 
I'm gonna say because this is about hotel reviews and there was something eye-catching things, I have come up with this prompt of the many cute cats lounging at the hotel by the ocean and say this is gonna be a professional quality photo. Additionally, that's similar different or different from the text models is you can additionally provide negative prompts is things you don't want to see in the image. And here we can see that we generated a pretty realistic looking image, but it's also hard to make it happen in real world. But uh, yes, you can try this more. Again, is a playground you can trick more. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure prompt engineering is a, is a, is a something not easy to do by itself. So we want to do a lot of experimentation. And that is where the playground comes in, right? Okay, so um, we are almost at time and that's pretty much all of the things I have. I do want to see like a closing uh, takeaways from this demo is uh, only sure that this Databricks is the one-stop shop for accessing and managing all of the foundation models, text in models or image models. And we can, you can use a pay-as-you-go, depending on how consume, or if you are ready for production, we can support the provision throughput. And they are all the same unified interface, right? So there's nothing changed. You can switch from between the models by just changing the name. And we have advanced features, inference table models for uh, inference tables for monitoring and evaluation, as well as the advanced tools uh, capability. So yeah, so that thing is uh, try it out if you have not already. So it's very easy to get started. I hope you build something fancy and very cool. All right, thank you. If I have any questions, I'll be here. <laughs>